Dynamic Shape Modeling Transformer Rig. My name is Barry Kimball. This lesson will demonstrate how to use the Transformer Rig to modify surface data, how to set up a free modifier Transformer Rig, and how to modify a conceptual model. In this lesson, we'll discuss how to use the Transformer Rig to modify surface data. The key learning objectives are how to use a free modifier, how to use tangent constraints, and how a concept model can be quickly modified. This video will demonstrate how to use the Transformer Rig and the free modifier to change these blended surfaces to intersect a new design feature. So oftentimes an original sketch or original surface design will create transitional surfaces that look like this and intersect a design feature or chamfer that looks like so. Now if we want to change the angle of this so to make it more open or to change it in the plan view in reference to the main seat, it can be very time consuming because we'll have to create all of these surfaces transitional blend curves or maybe they're rail surfaces, maybe they're freeform surfaces, but they'll all have to be recreated um, to show the new design. I'm going to demonstrate how to use a free modifier, this red surface create this design change. So I will shut off the symmetry for this data to make it a little easier to model and view and turn the shading off briefly. So we want to set up a transformer rig. So transformer rig is found under object edit dynamic shape modeling transformer rig and we will use these surfaces as the targets and as a free modifier we'll use this surface and I'll accept that as a modifier. Now we'll select go and this message says a transformer rig has been created history is set and to make changes we can use the transformation tools on modifier geometry or change the rig itself by using query edit. So I'm going to select this modifier geometry and select move and I can move it outboard and the geometry moves. I'm going to select transform local center pivot and I'm going to rotate it around the X and Z and the geometry moves. But as we see here there's now a gap between the original geometry and what I have modified to fix that gap or to maintain the original continuity I will use query edit and I'm going to set up a constraint. I would like the constraint not to be position but to be tangent so I'll select the tangent and when I do that I would like to select tangent to this surface and the following surfaces that lie around the geometry that I'm modifying. Accept those constraints. You can see there's a gap and the edge says tangent. When I select go the geometry will be recreated and we now have a continuity established between here of tangency. Now we can continue modifications to this surface so we could rotate this surface and you can see that these transitions update. We would make the desired changes. We can turn on symmetry to see what those changes look like. And once I get the attitude of this surface corrected, we can move on and finish the design. 
that is a free modifier. An additional thing you can do is not by simply rotating the surface, but I will turn on the control panel and some control vertice movement tools, and I will set the controls to moving hulls normal, and I can change and actually change the shape of this surface so that it doesn't need to be a flat plane. I can change individual pieces. So as I make this surface more crowned, the surfaces continue to follow and I get instead of a planar interference or a planar line where this blended feature intersects this shape I've got now a crowned feature and that is how a free to free modifier can be used to change transitional surfaces in this lesson you learned how to use a free modifier, how to use a tangent constraint, and how to quickly modify a concept model.